Okay, so the first thing we have within here is table section setup. So let's just select on this. Now, within table selection setup, this is where you're setting up all of your dining sections for the establishment. All right, I want you to visualize for a moment here. We're maybe at like a, a big entertainment complex or a hotel or something like that that has all types of different dining sections uh, involved within uh, the establishment. And so within here, what you do is you set up each dining section. I know back in the old days, it used to be smoking, non-smoking. That was pretty well it until all the smoking laws came down. Uh, but still, this gives you an idea of the different types of dining sections you can set up with it. Now, if I want to see all the sections that I have, we come down to the navigation bar. And in here, we select on the little flashlight icon, which is search. And in here, it will bring up all of the different dining sections that I've got. And you'll see within this, I've got things such as Bayside, patio, poolside, and terrace. These are the four that I'm going to be working with within this uh, sample presentation here. I should also point out as well that I created this some time ago, and people kind of like it. So I've actually taken uh, the stuff that we're going to be looking at today in terms of the floor layout and so on like that, and I've actually saved it uh, within the education session section of the MyPAR website as well. So if you ever want to do any kind of presentations and so on using these floor layouts, then by all means, uh, feel free to download them off the MyPAR website. Okay, so within here, I've got my dining section set up. In this case, we'll say Bayside is the one that we're looking at right now. Uh, obviously, that's the name of, of the dining section. And then underneath this, we have Revenue Center. A Revenue Center is a profit center, remember. So like in a hotel, for example, if I had a nightclub and I had a family restaurant and I had a lounge, for example, each one of those would be a different revenue center with its own staff, its own management, its own menu, and so on. And within here, you can have different dining sections assigned to different uh, revenue centers as well. The next thing down here we have are three little check boxes. And the first one says, enforce employee lockout. Now what this means is that if I open up table number two in this dining section, then that table belongs to me as Scott the waiter. Whereas you, if you try to get into it, you would not be able to do that as another waiter because that table is reserved to me. Now if I uncheck this box, then what that means is that now it's a free for all. Any, any of us can serve anyone at any table at any time. Uh, so you are a waiter, I am a waiter, table two needs a cup of coffee or a piece of pie or whatever it happens to be, then either one of us can open up that table and access it and go in and, uh, and serve those, those people. Now, just bear in mind that the last person to have access to that table is the person who currently owns that check. Okay, so for example, you get in, you open up table number two, you take an order and so on. <clears throat> and if I go in as as another waiter and I pick up table two and I add on a piece of pie, for example, that check is now under my name and I am responsible for it until it comes to the time of, of paying and whoever happens to be the person who processes that payment is the person uh, who will own that check. And when they own that check, that means that uh, they get credit for the sale and uh, also they are responsible for the cash as well, so just bear that in mind. Now if you want to restrict this, which more often than not is the case, then you would just select on this, in which case then you have one waiter working with the whole thing and that's it. Now you can override this as well with security settings. We'll be looking at that later on, uh, probably not today, but maybe in the next session. Um, and within security settings, if you have high enough security level then for authorization, such as a manager or maybe even a cashier, uh, then you would be able to pick up another person's check and, and do work on it that way as well. But the same rule applies is that the last person who accesses that check is the person who owns it as well. All right, the next thing we have down here is, <coughs> excuse me, enforce rated item before ordering. This is kind of like a non-loitering, no loitering type uh, function that we have within here. You have, for example, an establishment where you rent things. Okay, one of the things that Pixel Point can do is it can process rental items as well, uh, besides just regular food and beverage. And so that being the case, let's say we're at Scott's Bowling Alley, okay? And at Scott's Bowling Alley, we got a nice little snack bar with a grill set up in the back as well. And I make great hamburgers, great hot dogs, and they're really cheap. And um, all the teenagers like to come and eat my really cheap food and just kind of hang out. But the thing is, they're not renting a bowling alley or they're not renting bowling shoes or renting anything like that. And so what I can do is I can actually activate this little thing right here, in which case then if they try to uh, 
um, order anything and there is not currently a rental of any kind on the check, then the system will not permit this. Okay, so that's what this does. It, it first checks the contents of the, of the order to see if there is a rental residing on it. So they have to, let's say, rent a bowling alley or rent some shoes or something like that. There has to be a rental item on there, which is referred to as a rated item. And if that is the case, then they can place their order at the grill. Uh, but if, if not, like this, uh, on, or the other way around, uh, if, if it's unchecked, they can they can order anything, and if it is checked, they must have that rental on the order. The next thing we have down here is hide from floor layout. Now, just think back to the floor layout, the front end floor layout. In the top right section, we've got all the dining sections, such as bayside and or smoking, non-smoking, whatever it happens to be. And um, let's say within here, for example, not well. Let's why not bayside? Okay, so we have bayside right now. Uh, bayside means it's an outdoor dining section and it is right on the bay so you can overlook the water, very nice ambiance to uh, have a glass of wine and a salad or something like that. Problem is, it's the middle of January and so it's kind of cold out there because uh, there's snow all over the place and uh, no one wants to go sit out on the bayside patio uh, because of the weather. And so that being the case, there's no point of really having the bayside dining section actually accessible on the front end. So if, if that is the case, when winter comes and we close up the Bayside dining section, I can just select on this, and what it will do, it will now remove the title of Bayside off from that list of all the dining sections. So I'll, not, I'll now have just my three other dining sections instead of the fourth uh, being this one, because um, it's, it's the middle of winter and I won't be using this. And then when spring comes, we clean it all up and the snow's all gone and it's a little warmer out and I want to open it up. Then I just go back to this, I uncheck it, and now Bayside is back on the list and accessible for uh, servers to be able to go in and uh, select that dining section and tables within it. And so as you see here, I've got all of my four different dining sections. Now this is important that when you are setting up for um, a dine-in type application where there is more than one dining section, you do actually have something set up within here as well. That's very important uh, because as we get into one of the next sections, not necessarily the, the immediate one, but the next one after that, uh, then it will be important that you've got your dining sections already set up. Mm -hmm.